Zach, how you doing, man? What's up, man? How are you? Man, I'm doing all right. Doing all right, man. Uh, man, I uh, was kind of going through a friend uh, a fiasco the other day. Um, so I started wholesaling last month. Mind you, I'm on freewholesaling.com, and I give you props because a lot of this stuff is like right <laughs> in your course, dude, that you made. Um, oh yeah. So my situation, I have a VA. So I, I went into this, I'm, I'm kind of in a difficult situation, I'm getting out the military. So um, I kind of got to have my chips together. Income's not going to be coming in, right? So I'm putting everything into wholesaling. I've already spent thousands on like pulling lists. So I have, I use Roar for like SMS. Um, and then I basically have my VA. I have a whole like script. So my VA basically got text. And then all the people that have positive responses, I have my VA go through and she cold calls all of them and we book an appointments um but my my issue is is uh determining like what's more worth it cold calling or sms because there's so many like people that don't respond you, you know you get a whole bunch of negative responses and then it's like there's this whole list of people that just didn't respond um so do you do you recommend kind of one or the other because like i want to put my va to work i feel like I don't have her, like, I don't have her call these people that don't respond. And I feel like it's limiting me and, and, and I'm not getting as many deals as I should be. I get it. So a couple, a couple things you can do. So first of all, are you using a dialer for the cold calling? I'm using a Skype number, which is an issue too, because I can't, okay. I don't know what she's saying. I don't, I can't train her so that I know that's another, I'm trying right. to get my systems together. Yeah. I'm only asking you because sometimes the happy median is just dropping voicemails um, when you're calling. Um, right. If you're using a, so you have no dialer, right? I don't have no dialer. Okay, that's fine. You know, she um, works in the Philippines, so it's like yeah, there's only certain platforms that are actually available out there for them. You know, I mean, she has a VPN; she can do whatever she wants. But yeah. I tell you too, I. One thing I've, I've done, because I, I used to be a, like that type of system, I would put your personal cell in some of these um, lists as just a uh, quality control. For okay. example, I've, I've fired so many VAs because I put my personal cell on them. I get a call. There's a rooster and a baby crying while they're cold calling me. I'm like, oh, that's Cindy? Fired, right? Hey, <laughs> Well, how are you going to know how they're good at it unless they call you live and you actually know, right? Right. And I and know, so, man. Right? So that, that's how, when you don't have recording, that's the only way you can figure it out without just being in the blue. Um, right. So that's honestly what I would start doing. Like just like every thousand you're in there. And the cool part is the VA now knows that. And it's like, oh my gosh, this might be Terrence. I better like be on my A, a game, right? Ah. Uh. So that works too. You know, um, I learned that from actually when I was a, in a grocery store because they used to put in mystery shoppers. So I'm like, mm -hmm. why don't I just do that for wholesaling, right? Um, that works pretty well with the VAs. I also say I do it with SMS, but I never do it with SMS. Um, that's number one. What I used to do is if someone didn't answer the phone call, I would text them. So uh, if okay. you're in my list, you're going to call. You either answer the call, you don't answer the call, right? If you don't answer the call, you're going to get a voicemail dropped in of my, me personally saying hi. And then I would used to, when I didn't have the budget for SMS, like first starting out, I would just text uh, the mobiles and cold call the landlines. And then I would also, the people that answer the landlines, I couldn't text them, but I would also cold call the mobiles too. And then the ones that didn't answer the mobiles, I would go text them also. Okay. If they weren't texted already. So, how, okay, can I explain? I, I just want to get your opinion on, on my system, on, on my structure, right? All right. I kind of I kind of explained it a little bit. Um, but, yeah, so basically I pull these lists from PropStream. Um, also, another thing, another thing is, like, is there a max on square feet, right, when it comes to pulling these lists? Because, obviously, like, these houses that are 3,100 square feet, like, there's not a lot of cash buyers that like, what can you do with these houses that are 31 square feet and already renovated? Like, how is that? That's not really in high demand. Well, I will, I'll how raise you market there. that. How many houses over 3,100 square feet or above the median price in your market? 
very low. So I filter by price. I, I don't really usually get big houses because it's by, by price. price. Okay. Cash buyers, I, I'm, they don't care much about square footage. It's about the price and the cash flow. Right. I'm usually never over 2,500 though. That, like that's, that's a lot, right? That, that's like pushing it hard. So, okay. 20, yeah. Stay within. Well, it's like a multifamily. Then we do whatever you want. But if you, if you, if you stay within a little above the median and just a median or under, you're going to be fine. Okay. Um, quick question about JVing. So, um, well, first, okay, okay. This is my first time on live with you. Like, it's kind of crazy that I'm even on here. But um, my, my first thing is my system. So the first thing I do, I pull you this from PropStream, throw it in the roar, I send a text blast to everybody. The people that do respond, my VA calls, books and appointments, and then that's it. Like, and I know I'm, li I'm limiting myself by obviously not throwing those other leads into a dialer. So now that you told me that I'm going to start doing that, but is the system, is it, is it like, do like, is it, Yeah. you feel like where, it's like a common, where like, are you at right normal? now? Where are you at right I'm now? In I'm in Alaska. Okay. I'm stationed out here. Are you after the, when are you getting out of the military? June. June. And where are you going to go? I'm going to, I'm planning on going to Texas. Okay. We're in Texas. Um, Carrollton area, right outside of Dallas. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this. Um, where, where are you marketing to now? Um, shoot. I mean, I've, I've marketed to Greensboro, um, North Carolina, Myrtle. I've, I've pulled a lot of the like leads that you told me, like in these videos, um, Okay. Hampton, Hampton Roads, Virginia. You're gonna have to stick to one man. Myrtle, like, you, Myrtle you can't Beach, all over South the place. Carolina. <laughs> like, I'm just yeah. pulling all these places where 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 you're saying these are hot. So I'm I'm instead of pulling one list, I'm like, you know, two k here, five k here. I probably pull about thirty thousand leads. I only have two deals on a contract, so I'm trying to figure out what the hell is. I know what the hell is going the on. Problem, man. Here's what. What is the most? As someone who does this a lot. Um, what's the most expensive part of cold calling an SMS? The most expensive part? It's the most expensive part. The, the text? Skip tracing. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah texting, skip tracing is the most expensive part if you're paying for it. Yeah, I'm paying now, for it. If you pay, the cool part about skip tracing for me, for my market, is once I skip trace that list, Next year, that high equity list is probably going to be 90% the same. So I don't have to go spend it again. Your problem is you spend it in Greensboro. Then you spend it in Raleigh. Then he spends it in this. The, it, you're, you're just, yeah. you're, you're like, you're spending all this money on like all these different lists. You've got to stick to one, man. So one thing I'm you is in-person wholesaling is going to be better than virtual. It's going to be a tough pill to swallow, but I come from a place of love. Your best money in Dallas is going to be driving for dollars. Straight up. Right. And if you can find people to drive for dollars for you and cold call that list, you don't even need a VA. You'll spend less money and be more efficient. Okay. Um, and that's um, what I tell you. So if you're going to skip trace a list, do it to where you're moving to. Stick to that. Dallas has already proven it works and the suburbs right. around it. Trying for dollars is the best there, but I'd stick to that because you're going to be way more powerful in person. Right. And, and then, yeah, it sucks, especially like I'm trying to figure out how I can wholesale out here in Alaska because you wouldn't believe how many distressed properties are out here in Anchorage. Like it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ridiculous. Um, but the problem is I don't know what anything's selling for, so I can't run any comps, you know? I get so, it. I get it. A Anchorage would be a good one too. That wouldn't be a bad one. The market's hot out here, dude. The, the, a the average, uh, the median sell price out here is 415 yeah so it's like in these distressed ones man it's, it's crazy market out here but uh i have I, I do i do just have one last question or actually two that's cool yeah um i appreciate your help with that by the way so yeah i need to stick to one market appreciate your service start. man oh yeah thanks man man appreciate i appreciate it, your man. service man you you, uh, well, these, well, these you're, you're, guys, you got man. a little more braver than me okay buddy <laughs> You putting these bets on, man, trying to give us a, a another way, and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, man. So, I'm in. A, I'm in. 
I'm in a JV deal. All right. So this this guy hit me up on Facebook. He's pretty cool. And I mean, he's helped me say he's the one who put me on with Roar and all the systems. He didn't charge me anything, right? But it's a JV deal. So it's beneficial on his end to help me set up my system so he can make his, you know, end of the deal. Um I'm in a situation to where we're supposed to be closing on a property June 1st. And this is like the 3,100 square feet, super renovated. Um, it's in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Nice. It's a hot market. market. Yeah. Um, the only issue is he's having a hard time finding a demand for the cash buyer. I have two days left until the inspection period ends. And this, I could be making over, like the spread is over a hundred grand on this deal. And, you know, I'm relying on him, but it's just like, to what find the uh, cash buyer? Yeah, to find how do you go about like covering Why your don't ass you find the you cash buyer, dude? One? Right, yeah. But you it's a to... JV deal, so I'm like, you know, I'm expecting him to cover his end, but then it's like if I don't, like, is JV even worth it at the end of the day? Like, all right, bro, do you really rely let, let on tell you what, Let me tell you what I do. Okay. Cut out the JV with the guy. Get out of the JV. I first of all extend the contract. Never fun, but you're going to have to get rid of the JV dude. Get out of it. Make sure he's legally out of it. Right. He's going to be right. mad, but he didn't find a cash buyer. He didn't live up to his end. Right. Boo hoo. He didn't live and up to no, his end. There's no JV contract with us either. So it's oh, not, you didn't sign nothing anything? binding us. No. And, and that's no. another thing. He I mean, wouldn't. Terrence, you have your word. Over. You have your word. So unless you've guaranteed something stupid, um, you're going to be fine. Get out of it if you can. If it doesn't break your word or your bond. Um, but I would get an extension. I would literally cold call every single four rent I could, post on all the groups, and find a cash buyer. You have prop stream, right? You said? Yeah, I got, I got prop stream. Cold call all the four rents, then go to Facebook groups, and then start cold calling cash sales on truepeoplesearch.com, and you'll find someone. Right. There ha I mean, there has to be. You'll find someone in three days. This is this is what you do it. So I'm looking at the ARV on this place. We got I got it locked up for 360. All right, the ARV. Cause I do math, and this this guy is kind of more like he says he has experience, you know, and he's just like off the top with it. And uh, I think it can go for he he thinks it can go for five over 500 to 550. It's locked up at 360. All of a sudden, he says he has two people. What he does is he sends it off. So he said he sent it to about 40 people, and he said two people came in with two offers that were 30 K under what I got it for. So three, three twenty, And then he's like, it's the market. They, it's the market is, you know, and I'm just like, there's no way like. Talk to more the, buyers, the, man. That's the I'm key. Just like, yeah. So it's just like, I have a trust issue too. And it's just like, I'm more of accountable on myself, you know, and I'm trying to be more trusting in other people to, to cover their end. But Dude, find a cash no. buyer. Yeah. You just have to go to more cash buyers and offer the price. Someone's going to buy it. Right. Co call the four rents, cash sales on prop stream, and then Facebook groups. You'll find it. So I should just no more JVing and just do it on my own. Dude, do it. You got to extend that deal. Yeah. Take action. It's the goal. One last, one last question, man. What do you oh, think yeah. about high level or an Antwilio? What do you mean about Twilio? Twilio for uh, text blasting and um, they, they, they also have a dialer, but you can actually sure. integrate it into high level. Sure. I've never, I, I mean, I, I kind of, I use batch for it, but I integrate with Twilio. So it'll work yeah. out. Just it'll don't complicate out. it, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, man, man. I appreciate your help, bro. All right. For Thanks. Real.